Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program, in ch uh, actually the first program in chapter four is bug collector. All right, so a bug collector collects bugs every day for five days. Write a program that keeps a running total of the number of bugs collected during the five days. The loop should ask for the number of bugs collected for each day. And when the loop is finished, the program should display the total number of bugs collected. All right, so this program is going to keep track of how many bugs were collected for five days. So on the first day, it's going to ask, ask the user how many bugs were collected on day one, how many bugs were collected on day two, how many bugs were collected on day three, day four, and then day five. And it's going to add them all together. I mean, I mean while the loop is running, it's going to keep track of how many bugs were collected in total in all the five days. And then by the time the loop is done, by the time it's done asking how many bugs were collected on day five, once that's done, it's going to display that uh, display um, the total the total number of bugs collected for the five days is this number. Okay, so let's start. So it says a bug collector collects bugs f every day for five days. So write a program that keeps a running total. Um, let's see. So it says the loop should ask for the number of bugs collected for each day. All right. All right. So let we know a few things about this question. Let's see. Um, a bug collector collects bugs every day, f every day for five days. Okay, so five days. So we know five days is is the basically the um, the total number of days that we are working with, right? So we can sta save that in a variable, or store that in a variable. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it um, total days. So total days is going to be equal to five. We know that. We know we are we are keeping track of the bugs collected for five days. So write a program that keeps running total. Let's see. Um, wh what other numbers do we know? Um, we know we are going to keep track of the total number of bugs collected. So we, we need to have a variable, an accumulator that's going to keep track of how many bugs were collected each day. So be an accumulator that's going to basically keep track of how, um, the total number of bugs collected for, the, for all the five days. So I'm going to create another variable and, and, and call it total number of bucks total number of bucks I'm going to initially once it, before we start the program before we run the program total number of bucks is going to be zero so I'm going to initialize that to zero okay we don't have anything yet when 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 we haven't started the program we don't have anything yet in total number of bucks so total number of bucks initially is going to be zero okay another thing we need to keep track of let's see so for we know we need we need a loop to loop five times and it's going to keep uh, ask the user for how many bucks were collected for each day. So let's create a loop. Let's go ahead and create the loop. So I'm going to create a for loop, right? So a for loop. So for I'm going to create a target variable, and a target variable is basically you know we are starting from a certain a certain day to the last day. The last day in this case is five. Okay, so total number of days. All right. If you want, you can actually you can actually set this as that n not total days. You can name this as let's say last day. You can say uh, last day, last day. If, if you want, uh, I think does it make uh, yeah. It, it, if you want, you can name 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 it as last day, or you can just just keep it as total number of days or total days. All right. So we are starting from. I'm going to first of all create a target variable. So for current day we are starting from the current day in range right so in the in this current in this current range I'm going to specify the range here so for current day in range I'm, I want to start from one day one I want current day to be start from one so for current day in range one all the way to the total days um, you can you can name this as, as last days. Like I think last days will make sense, but I'll, I'll keep it I'll keep it as total days, all the way to the total days. Plus one. Now, if I don't add one to the total days, then this loop is going to start from one all the way to four, because as we know, the ending variable that you type, okay, it's not included. If you if we put five here, so if total if we just do total days, which is going to be equal to five, so one. And then five here, it's going to this this loop is going to start from one all the way to four. That five is not included. So we have to add one to total days. So basically this loop is going to go from current day. Current day is going to um, be one 
and then all the way to total days plus one. Total days plus one is six. So one and then six. Six is not included. So that means one and five. One to five. Six is six is like the limit and the limit. It's not included. Okay, so it's going to read this whole thing is going to read as six. One and six. Yes, we are start this is a starting we are starting from one all the way to five because this six is not included. All, all the way to one less than the ending limit. Okay, so all the way to so five. So one to five. So one to total day, which is five plus one. So current day is going to start from one to five. Alright, so we each time the loop iterates, we are going to ask the user to enter how many bucks were collected for that day, for that current day. So I'm going to create the input function and ask the user how many bucks were collected for that day. So how many bucks okay, were collected on day? Now, since we have the current day stored in a variable, we can go ahead and use it. Let's see. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and use it. Since we have that current day, we can go ahead and use it in the variable. So how many bucks were collected on day current day? This way. Okay, how many bucks were collected on day current day? Current day contains uh, basically storing an integer variable. In this case, it's going to start from 1 all the way to 5. If you try to concatenate a number, in this case an integer to a string, the interpreter is going to complain and say that you can't con uh, you can't convert in this case an integer to a string implicitly that means you have to go ahead and convert it to a string explicitly we have to do it ourselves so so by doing it ourselves i'm going to go ahead and create str because now we're doing it ourselves i'm going to call the str function and then surround the current day variable around the str function and the str function is going to basically convert the contents of cur current day to a string so now it wouldn't complain converting a string to a string it can do that so how many bucks are collected on day the current day the current day variable the current day current uh, target var variable is going to keep track of the current day so i'm going to also end it with i'm going to concatenate it with another string and with a colon and a space so how many bucks were collected on day current day colon space and uh, and the input function okay always returns the input function always returns a, a string no matter what the user types so the, in this question it's asking for how many bucks are collected the user is going to type in a number but even though the user types in a number the input function is going to return that number as a string but the thing is we we want to take that number and then add it up we want to use that number for math for basically calculations because the input function always returns a string, we cannot use a string. Um, we cannot use a str we can't use a string as of in, in calculation. So we have to end up converting everything the user ha user has typed into an integer. And to do that, you have to call the int function here like this and surround everything that the user has typed with parentheses. So we've called the int function and we've surrounded everything that the user has typed with parentheses, and it's going to basically convert everything the user has typed into an integer. Now I know that I'm exceeding this line. Um, I'll explain that in a second. But first, once the user has typed in something and he, and we have converted that number or that input to us to an integer, let's go ahead and store the result in an integer. Now this result that or this uh, yeah this um, value that is is being returned is going to be the box collected for the day for for the current day. So I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it box collected. I'm going to set it equal to what is being returned. Okay, so now that now back to what I was saying over here. I have exceeded this line over here. And this line is like a guideline for me to keep 80 characters on the line, to type 80 characters on the line. I don't want to exceed that. So it's like a guideline for me to do that. So because I've exceeded it, I need to break this line into, into two lines. And to do that, I'm going to break it somewhere here. To break any a line on in Python, you have to type the backslash and then hit enter. So now I've broken that line in two lines, and I'm still within the 80 characters, and 80 characters um, per line. So now box collected is going to keep track of the box collected for one particular day. Once I've collected the box for one particular day, 
I know my total number of bucks is equal to zero. I want to add up the bucks collected to the total number of bucks and then move on to the next day. So now total number of bucks is going to be equal to what's already stored in total number of bucks. plus the bucks collected for the day, like this. Okay, so total number of bucks is going to be equal to what's already stored in total number of bucks, plus the bucks collected uh, per day. So initially, total number of bucks is going to be equal to zero. And then if the bucks collected per day, let's say is two, two is going to be added to zero, and it's going to be two. Two is going to be added to total number of bucks. The next time th th this loop runs, total number of bucks is going to hold two. Let's say the user enters, let's say five for the next day. Total number of bucks is going to be two plus the five bucks collected for that day. Five plus two gives you seven and seven is going to be added to total number of bucks. The next time this loop runs, total number of bucks is going to hold seven and so on and so forth. Okay, now this same statement can be written as total number of bucks plus equals bucks collected. Okay, it's a shorthand version. So basically what is being added to total number of bucks is equal to bucks collected. Okay, what is being added to total number of bucks is equal to bucks collected. In other words, I am adding bucks collected to total number of bucks. You can read it that way if it helps. So this loop is going to go through five times. It's going to loop iterate five times. It's going to start from one all the way to five. And it's going to ask the user for the bucks collected, uh, bucks collected for that particular day, add it up to total number of bucks. Total number of bucks is an accumulator that keeps track of how many bucks in total were collected for, the, for all the five days. By the time this loop is done, we're going to have the total number of bucks stored in total number of bucks, the total number of bucks variable. So outside the loop, I'm going to go ahead and display the final result. So I'm going to print a couple of... Um, um, I'm uh, basically print print um, something. I'm going to print something, but I'm going to pass it those um, things I'm I want to print or those arguments I want to print into the print function as argument. I want to print out s uh, certain things, so I'm going to print out or send those different pieces to the print arg um, statement as arguments. Okay. So the first thing I want to print is I'm going to say um, the total number of bucks um, collected for all okay and I'm going to that's the first argument now for all five I want to say for all five days now so I have the five stored in total days so I can use it here so total days is the next argument I'm passing for all five and I want to send another string which is days so for all five days so the normal back for five days uh, is okay. So all five days is, and then I'm going to send in the last argument, which is what is what is already stored in total number of bucks. Now I've already exceeded this line again, so I want to break it somewhere here. Before I break it, I have to type the backslash and hit enter. So what is happening here this time around? Now I haven't done this. I I'm always I was trying I was trying to concatenate things together to, together, but this time around I'm passing the different things I want to print as argument. So I'm printing this as argument. Uh, this is the first piece I want to print, followed by this piece, followed by this piece, followed by this piece. By default, when you send arguments to the print function and you separate them with commas, when they are printed, they are separated with a space. By default, by default they are se separated with a space. So Total number of bucks collected for all space, five space, days is space, total number of bucks. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this program and see what happens. I'm going to save this program where I save all the Python files on the desktop. Uh, I need, this is in chapter four, so I need to create a new folder for chapter four. And I'll create a folder here. And then I'll save this as um, bug collector. Oops, let's see. No, I'll save it as bug collector. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll create a new folder for chapter four here. I mean, for bug collector. 
think that's what I've been doing. And I'll save this program as about collector.py. Okay, so now we're running the program. Let's see what happens. So now it says how many bucks were collected on day one. See, it's no, it knows what to use. It knows what to use over here. Okay. So how many bucks were collected on day one? I'm going to say two bucks were collected on day one. How many bucks were collected on day two? I'm going to say two. How many bucks were collected on day three? Two. Day four, two. Day five, two. And hit enter. Now it says the total number of bucks collected for all five days is 10. Now we can see it's working because two plus two plus two plus two plus two is 10. Now I want to go ahead and display a, a new line before the t before the, the results. I don't want to match these to these the the questions and then the, the output together. So after I where is it? After the loop is done, before I can go ahead over here and then type in the backslash n as a new line character. So backslash n to as a new line character. So basically, when this when the loop is done, okay, when the loop is done, it's going to the case is going to be right at right here. But when I create when when it sees the new line character, it's going to basically take the case to the next line. It's going to go down here like this. It's going to take, it's create a new line and then take the case to the next line. So anything that comes after the new line, in this case, total number of box, you know, that, that whole string, in this case, this whole string. When the case is here, that whole string is going to display on that on that case. So basically creating a new line character um, or backslash n together 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 they together it's the new line character it's going to create a new line before this string is displayed that's one way of doing it another way of doing it is you can just call after the loop is done you can just call the print statement like this now if you call the print statement with let's say regular text in here and I run this program again I, I basically punch in the same values now what happened was I printed this statement and by default the print statement end, ends with a new line. So it prints whatever you want it to print. So in this case it printed whatever I wanted, wanted it to print. And then it took the case to the next line automatically. By default that's what happens with the print function. It prints whatever you want it to print and it takes the case to the next line. So anything that is displayed after that print statement, after this print statement, in this case this one, is displayed where the case is. So by default Print function prints what, whatever you want it to print and it takes the case to the next line. Now, if I delete everything in here, if I delete everything in the print function like this, I'm still calling a print function, but this time I'm not printing anything. So this won't be printed. I'm not printing anything here. I'm printing nothing, but it still takes the case to the next line. By default, it takes the case to the next line. So it prints nothing, meaning it prints a new line, an, an empty line. And then takes the case to the next line over here. So anything that comes after that print function, in this case, the total number of bucks collected is going to be displayed where the case is, like that. So calling the print function without passing any argument, any string, is going to create a new line and take the case to the next line. So I'm going to run this again, type in the same values, and then now we have the new line over here. And the total number of bucks collected for all five days is 10. Now, we could have done the same thing with the, with the backslash n, and it would have done the same thing like I explained. So this works. Let's try a different value. So I'm going to try three for day one, three for day two, two for day three. So now we had, we had eight, five for day four, we had 13, and then 10 for day five. So now we had 23. So when I hit enter, it says the total number of bucks collected for all five days is 23. Okay, so this program is working. All right, if you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time with the next program. Bye-bye.